Woo wee! Look at the size of that right there. We ain't playing around today. It's extremely cold out right now. And we are not playing around today. Big chunks. Oh, woo. I've got a course set for some true big fish adventure today. We ain't playing around. We've established they're here. We've established they're spooky. They don't like hitting behind the boat. I'm just gonna use two rods and I'm gonna get them way away from the side of this boat. I have very aggressively set a course, figure eighting through what I have figured out is the hot zone for the bigger fish. I've actually got an early start today. It's, uh, it's not even 10 o'clock. Hey, that's early for me. I spent all day long uh, fishing for skipjack yesterday. They've been tough in this cold. The area that I caught skipjack was notorious for giving me flathead catfish. So I stuck around after dark for one of those. This ain't even that big, man. That's just a riled up flathead. He's not even that big, man. He's just pulling hard. Lord, he's pulling hard. That big old thump on the rod tip, man, I figured it was a flathead when you get that thump like that. The way he dove down, I, I thought he was going to be bigger than that, but just a hard, hard pulling flathead. Hard pulling thing, man. Unreal. I've already made three other videos at this spot. I've experimented from out there in the channel to in this backwater creek. I've been landing fish in the 30 to the 50 pound range out of this creek. I decided what depth they were in and uh, I decided, again, they were not hitting behind the boat. So we've got an earlier start today. Uh, my bait is very fresh. And I'm going to pull into this hot zone here. I have set a figure eight course, a pretty long one. And I'm just going to keep running that same pattern until we bust a big fish today. 
I've started it outside this creek and we're going to work our way in. I'm going to keep one giant bait on a double hook rig over there. All my baits are going to be big today. And I'll run my body chunks over here. I don't want a bunch of lines out there for when I hook this big fish. It's going to happen today. It needs to happen today because once people see the videos I made at this place, there's going to be 500 catfish boats in here and I ain't going to be able to fish here no more. As I am filming this video right now, the very first video I made here will be coming out on YouTube today. So this is my last shot at a big fish in here. Once I put these videos out, every cat fisherman in Tennessee, Georgia, Ohio, Kentucky, they're all going to be here this weekend. And I will be moving on to new adventures. Before y'all get here, I'm going to sore lip these fish real good. I'm even going to turn my depth finder off because I've heard some days that can spook catfish. I know it spooks skipjack. I can confirm that. But just in case, we're not going to have that transducer noise going on. It doesn't seem to be a bluebird sky. Uh, seems to have just a little bit of cloud cover. It's very cold. Uh, temperature's not even up to f above freezing yet. It may get up in the 40s today. I've got my speed bumped up to 0.7 miles per hour. Coming into this bottle point right here is where something may happen. There's a bit of a hole here. The water drops down about five foot deeper than everywhere else. And the channel gets squeezed way down here. One of the big fish I caught in one of those videos was coming through this thing. Let's see if it happens again. The bait is fresh. As a matter of fact, I may slow it down right in this area. Now that we are coming into a place I know is a bit prime. We're going to slow her down here. Right through this bottle point. Don't you hang up. Don't you hang up. Don't you hang up. Don't you hang up. Please don't hang up that double hook rig. Please don't hang up that double hook rig. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please don't hang that up. No, 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 no. Don't hang that up. It takes too long to tie it. Please don't hang that up. Please don't hang that up. I hung it up. I'm gonna have to go back and try to get it back. Pull everything in. Yeah, it's not coming loose. I hope I'm not hung again. I hope I'm not hung again. If I'm hung again, I'm gonna be pissed. I'll bet a tongue in the same dang spot. This little bottle area right here, it's a bad place. If I don't get hit coming through here, I'm gonna stay out of it. I kinda hope I don't get hit in here so I can stay out of it. I'm tired of tying stuff. Always some dag blasted dog just to barking in my videos. Never fails. that thing had an on and off switch. Gosh dang. Do 
you have to. All right, y'all, we didn't catch jack squat coming through that narrowed section of this creek. Now, I haven't been here in a couple days. Hopefully, they ain't left out. I spent yesterday chasing skipjack. Uh, I've just widened my planer boards, and this section here is where I marked a figure eight to cover the deepest, widest pool of this creek area. I've widened my boards. I'm gonna go ahead and add a third rig out the back. I'm gonna let it get way, way, way behind the boat because these fish are spooky. Um, basically, I've got a Catfish Dave contraption. I took a big giant spook uh, like this and I added a bunch of inline rattles to it. Hear all that? See if that don't get their attention. We're going to throw this one out the back. That was a lot of work tying that. I hope I don't get it hung. We're going to throw this right here. 11 knot hook. We after the big ones today. I heard something jump. If there's skipjack in here, I'll throw for them. You can bet that. Ah, let's get this way out the back. This extra high speed I'm running will help uh, help these rattles do their thing. I don't care if I don't catch a bunch of fish. I don't care if I don't catch but one fish, as long as he's a big trophy sized fish. That's what I want. That's what we're here for. We can get them little ones year round. There we go. There was the first bite right there. He pulled the bait. He hit it very aggressive and pulled the bait. Looked like a good fish. Oh well. We hooked that one going 0.8 miles per hour. Well, we know there's a fish in here anyhow. It's still early, man. We got time to do this. All right, y'all, we're into phase two of this. Uh, when I bumped the speed up to uh, 0.8, we had a pretty good hit. I barely had that bait hooked because circle hook you wanted exposed, he ripped it off. Looked like a good fish. I bumped the speed up to one miles per hour. Now one might ask, why are you going one miles per hour when all these other guys are saying uh, 0 0.5 is what you want to go? Well, how many monsters are these other guys catching? You know, I catch a ton of fish going 0 0.5, but how many monsters are we catching? Sometimes uh, I think these monsters need a little different look than what's being presented every day. Maybe they would get caught more often if they got a little different look than what they see every day with a thousand catfish boats out here every day of the week, dropping the same hunks of bait, you know, doing the same stuff. These big fish get smart, so you gotta throw them a different look. That's why I've got that Catfish Dave contraption on there. I've noticed an extreme amount of very large fish that have been caught with the technique of bumping in high current areas, and the bait's moving very fast, way faster than 0.5. And there's a, a large number of big fish that get caught that way, uh, to me, more than any other way, from what I've seen. Maybe that fast presentation doesn't give the fish time to really think about it and be wary about it. He has to make an instant decision. Do I wanna eat or not eat? and he doesn't have time to worry about 
whether it's any sort of danger or not. So uh, we're going to throw them a little different look. Let's try it. Let's try one mile an hour for a while. The mind of a cat fisherman. This is my fourth attempt at this spot, and I know there's big fish in here. I have caught some nice ones. Have not got a monster. So I'm going to do things a little differently. All right, people, I completed my first course. Got hit one time where the fish pulled the bait. Couple small bites. Uh, there's three things that could be going on here. One, the fish are there and got lockjaw. Two, they've either went back out into the main river into deeper water, or three, they've actually left out of the magic zone I was catching them in and went up into even shallower water. So the boat is pointed towards the shallower water. I'm going to ease up into shallower water. Maybe they've moved. Maybe they're still in this creek and just moved. So I've got it pointed up towards the shallower water. And uh, I noticed when I put it, the ramp, some good schools of shad all the way up there by the ramp. And when I was catching them, most of the shad was out here. Maybe everything has moved up by the ramp. We're headed that way to find out. Oh, we're hooked up shallow. We're hooked up shallow. Not the one we're after. In seven foot of water, first fish landed though. And I'm cruising even shallower. I'm gonna take this thing all the way into two foot. These fish have went somewhere. Yeah. On the old Catfish Dave Bling Bling rig. Big bait. Maybe shot, I should uh, experiment with the small bait. Sometimes big fish will hit small baits. Sometimes that's what they're looking for. If they've been feeding real good and ain't full today, a small bait might be the ticket. So we'll run a small bait on this middle rod. Since I've got a giant bait there, big bait there. And that giant bait's been hit with small fish, but maybe the big fish want a small bait today. Six foot getting shallower.
we're going to drag this thing shallow, man. We're going to get it into three foot of water. You never know. The water temperature is actually two degrees colder from uh, last time I was here. We keep getting these 20 degree nights. Well, it's a good thing that I caught that flathead last night to add to this video because the bite absolutely sucks out here. That first video I made of this place, it came out a couple hours ago, and I guarantee you, everybody's done got the truck loaded up, the boat behind the truck, and on their way down here right now, thinking they're gonna get on a hot bite. Well, I feel sorry for them, because right now, you can't hardly buy a bite out here. I went from hoping to get a monster to where if I get one 30 pound fish, I'm getting out of here and I'm going to another lake. I've done slowed my speed down to a crawl, hoping there's one fish left in this place and that'll give them plenty of time to look at the bait. That first theory of high speed might have worked if there were some fish in here. Dag blasted bass boats. Well, we've slowed the boat down to an absolute crawl. And right now, we're just begging for a bite. You people coming down here from Ohio and Georgia and Kentucky, because you've seen that video come out today, I feel sorry for you people. It's cold, it's windy, and we ain't catching jack squat. I need to be changing these baits out. They've been out there about four hours. They've been hit multiple times by small fish. And this increasing wind is gonna make it very difficult when I switch back the opposite direction. That's a dag blasted striper. Dag blasted striper. Well, you know you're having a bad day when you catch one of them dag blasted fish with the stripes on them. Dag blasted. Woo wee, this wind sucks. It's cold. These fish done left.
Well, I thought it was a lot bigger than that one, I'll tell you that. Man, I thought that fish was a lot bigger than that the way he hit. He pulled hard too. The wind's finally dying down a little bit. I'm gonna tell you what. What nothing going on in the creek. I figure they left. It's been two days since I've been here. How far could they have went? So we get just out to the outside of it now. And I pop, it's not a bad fish. It's not a dink. Uh, first decent fish. That fish slammed that rod. <laughs> All right, y'all, that was a hard fighting fish for what he is. That thing slammed that rod hard. And when I first set into it, man, I thought I really had something there. Just a spunky old fish. He's got a lot of mud on this side of him. He must have been just leaning right up against some kind of a ledge somewhere. Tight to the bottom. That <laughs> thing pulled hard, man. Come to the top of the water, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. Not a bad fish, sure no monster. I guess at this stage, my initial plan was to uh, pop a big fish and then go try a different lake, but it's been a tough day on the water. Y'all that's on your way down here from Georgia and Ohio and Kentucky, I feel sorry for you when you go fishing in there. As in all my videos, there's a lesson somewhere to those of y'all that watch me every week. You've seen the very first video I put out uh, when I had found these fish up in this creek. Made one, two, Three videos getting some really good fish. And on the fourth time, I skipped a day to go catch some bait. And when I come back, those fish had already moved out. So these blue cat are movers. As we transition into winter, the fish are transitioning. They're here one week, they're there the next. Sometimes you'll get on a good spot and it'll produce for weeks. You might get on a spot and it'll produce for one day and they've moved out. So you just have to play it by ear, take it as it comes. Some days the fishing's great. Some days you really got to work for that fish. I definitely had to work for that one. What caused all these fish to leave? I'd say I sore lipped them all and they left. This is a video. There was fish in the video. That makes it a fishing video. This is Catfish Dave with another one, signing out.